It's a major breakthrough for people with paralysis. In the U.S., three paraplegic patients were able to walk again after researchers implanted a device to electrically stimulate their spinal cords. The milestone was reported by two teams of scientists working separately. And while they all admit not knowing much about the mechanism itself, they say it does prove that the spinal cord can be retrained to function under certain conditions. Claire Rush has the story. 22-year-old Kelly Thomas is paraplegic, but she has learned to walk again. This some three years after her car accident left her paralyzed, and seven months after her operation at the Kentucky Spinal Cord Injury Research Center. There, doctors implanted an electrode in her spinal column. The device sends electrical signals with the help of a small remote, allowing Kelly to move her legs. The walking, it is like I was talking to two completely different legs for months. A similar success story can be found at Minnesota's Mayo Clinic, where Jared Shinnock, paralyzed since 2013, has regained his ability to stand and walk with assistance. The 29-year-old also had an electrode implanted in his spine. It's linked to another implant in his abdomen that communicates wirelessly with an external remote. The device enables neurons to receive the signal that he wants to stand or step. Like my sitting balance and stuff has gotten a lot better. I can shoot my bow a lot better because I'm able to hold, have more trunk support. My standing's gotten a lot better. I can stand. Walking on the treadmill has gotten a lot better and easier. Now I think our real challenge starts and that's understanding and how this happened, why it happened, and, and who the best patients are that we can help going forward. Doctors and researchers have yet to understand the precise mechanisms in the central nervous system that allow patients with paralysis to move again. Well, I'm now joined by Susan Harkema, who leads the Kentucky Spinal Cord Injury Research Center at UofL. It's an honor to have you here on the show. Now, you were there when both patients, Kelly and Jeff, took their first steps after being paralyzed for years. Uh, for the, the caregivers, the researchers, and for the patients themselves, it must have been incredible moments of joy. Well, you know, I think that, uh, at least for me, it was a, it was a stunning moment, even though <coughs> I've uh, been working for it uh, for 25 years, and uh, you uh, hypothesize this is what's going to happen, and your evidence is going forward. Um, that first moment uh, when I saw it, um, it, it was quite amazing. And now, tell us more about how this epidural implant works, specifically. So the epidural stimulator is an off-the-shelf implant for pain, and we uh, used it for this uh, uh, experimental approach. And we use a 16 uh, lead, um, 16 contact lead that goes over the dura of the spinal cord, and uh, with a cable that goes around, uh, that wraps around to the front, um, to the stimulator and uh, battery. So there's 16 contacts and we select different combinations of anode and uh, cathode frequency, amplitude, pulse width combinations uh, for a specific motor task, whether that's standing or stepping or moving the leg. So once we select those co configurations, we use that not to drive the motor system, but to excite uh, the spinal cord and use that in combination with training um, and the person using their intent to do that task. And we practice that over and over again um, and uh, until the individual relearns uh, that specific task. And in this particular paper, we were showing the ability to relearn independent walking. So that's precisely what you learned through this experiment about the human spine. Yes. So what we've learned uh, is that the human spinal cord has the intrinsic capacity to control walking. And so what uh, we know now is that it's very sophisticated. It can relearn. And it is actually the primary controller of movement. And that's very important because what we know now is that even with a severely um, compromised uh, connection from the brain in, rights, in the right situations with this technology, 
uh, we can uh, revive, if you will, the function of the spinal circuitry to get uh, a significant recovery. Well, thank you so much, Susan Harkemine. Once again, congratulations on this wonderful medical breakthrough.